Hi, I'm Terry Crook from Living Church of Christ, and uh, thank you for joining us. We're hanging out here in the trees, under some trees, because it's raining, so we'll try to get through this and not get drenched. Uh, today we're going to talk about being a normal individual, and how God takes the normal individual, and he does his greatest work. You remember the situation in the book of Acts in verse 13, that Jesus' disciples were being, pressure was being put on them for teaching about the name of Jesus Christ and the resurrection. And you remember that they take a look at Jesus' apostles and they think, these, these are just ordinary guys. You know, in our world today, we always think we've got to be extraordinary. We've got to be somebody unique. We've got to be somebody different. But you know, it's really important for us to realize that God is the one who makes us great. Uh, the Libby Church of Christ guys get together on Tuesday mornings about 11 o'clock. We used to meet down at Rose Hours before COVID uh, came into our world. And so we started meeting out behind the church building, and now we're meeting in the fellowship hall. It's a lot, a lot of area there so we can keep some distance. And so it's interesting, and uh, the guys get together, and we spend about an hour just hang out, talk, visit about, talk about life, all kinds of things, be family, and then pray about uh, some of the things that's important in the world that we're living and uh, the other day, one of the brothers was talking about, uh, they tell the different stories, life stories about different things. And after I was talking to that brother about his story, and I mentioned that one of the brothers was uh, quite tickled with the story and some of the amusing parts of his story. And he said about that brother, he said, he said, you know, he is, he is a couple bubbles short. And as a result of that, and he gave him this compliment, he would make a great submariner because this brother who's telling the story is an old submariner. And I, well, what a great compliment to say, man, you're a couple bubbles short. You'd fit in the submarine right there with us. And my response to that brother was, uh, you know, the whole submarine crew was gathered there that day. And so it's important for us to realize that God takes ordinary people, and in him we become the extraordinary individuals. He's the one who gives us purpose. He's the one who gives us life. And without him, we are nothing in this life. You remember the Apostle Paul, one of my favorite passages in Acts chapter 15. It says in chapter 17, In him we live and we move and we have our very being. Without Jesus Christ, we are nothing. We're terminal. We're here for a short time and we vanish away. And so it's so important for us to remember that it's all about God in this life. A couple of points to remember with that. Number one, we need to not think too highly of ourselves. You know, it's the nature of us as humans that we think that we've got things under control and, and we want to accomplish something. We've got it together. But a passage in uh, Romans chapter 12, it says that we shouldn't think too highly of ourselves. That's what the world is. You know, look at me. Look what I've done. What I have accomplished in my life. That we need to be transformed individuals and not be like the rest of the world. In Romans chapter 12, it says, Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and then you'll be able to test and prove what God's perfect will is. And so we need to be individuals who can think like God, that we think differently about life. We look at life totally different. We respond differently. We're not following the same steps that everybody else is. We're not chasing after the same things that the rest of the world is trying to squeeze as much out of this orange as we can before it's all over. But we need to be people who set our priorities and realize that it's all about God, that it's not about us. Every ability, every talent, every breath we take comes from Him. And so we need to prioritize our lives around Him. If we think too highly of ourselves, God will not be able to work in our lives. We'll be working on our problems. We'll be trying to accomplish our task. And we'll never become what God created us to be. God makes normal people extraordinary individuals. And so we need to realize that God is in control and let him take charge of our lives and submit our will to his will and let him be the leader of our lives. Only then can we be free. In John chapter 8, Jesus says, if you're really my disciples, if you really believe, if you're really my disciples, you will hold the truth and the truth will set you free. Freedom doesn't come by us having as much as we can gather. Freedom doesn't come with us accomplishing as much as we think we've got to accomplish in this life. Freedom and happiness doesn't come by us becoming all and experiencing everything. If we have this big bucket list in life that we're going to do all of these things, we need to back up and realize that life is short for a reason. God only gives us a few years to live on this planet, and we need to realize that 
that's the way it is. We cannot do everything and that's okay because what we have coming in the future is not even able to begin to compare with what we have here. And so we need to put life in perspective that it's not about me and it's not about me and not think so highly of ourselves that we've got our plan and our schedule and what we are going to do and all of this stuff and start realizing that life is about God. And when we start realizing that life is about God, then we as ordinary people can become extraordinary individuals. Now look at the apostles and their lives is something that really illustrates that. And so you look at Jesus' apostles, and it probably some people would say, and in Jesus' day, these guys are a motley crew. You know, Jesus didn't go out and get the guys who were all had all the education. He didn't get the guys who were wealthy. He didn't go get the guys who were predominant in their community. But he went out and got rough, tumbled guys who were who were guys other people didn't want to hang around, you know. They were the basically the fishermen, the loggers, the individuals, the guys who knew how to work hard and, and uh, just accomplish things in life, stay busy, staying at the task. And he brought those guys in, spiritual individuals, with extremely rough edges, and he worked with them. You remember Peter, and we can probably really relate to him if you got a lot of energy, is he was always in trouble. You know, this is, this is where it's at, you know, and he's following Jesus and you know, trying to figure out what was going on with him. You remember on one occasion, Jesus was teaching and he was on the edge of the sea there. And uh, he gets in Peter's boat and they push out a little ways and Jesus sits in that boat and he talks to the crowd. And then he says, Peter, hey, let's go catch some fish. And Peter said, man, we've been fishing all night. We haven't caught a thing. And Jesus says, just let's just do it. And so they go out, they throw their nets down, and they have so many fish that it almost sinks the boat. They had to pull in some other boats to drag them ashore. And Peter looks at Jesus, and he says, he knows, you know, hey, he's a commercial fisherman. I'm the commercial fisherman. And Jesus teaches me, tells me how to go out and catch all these fish. And he says, I'm a sinner. You know, just, I, I can't even be away from, around you. Get away from me. He realizes, I am a lost individual. You are the Messiah. You're God. To be able to catch fish when I can't catch fish, I'm the professional in this situation. And so you see him in his life. He's so excited about Jesus. And he said, oh, yeah, you're the Messiah. You're the one. I know everybody else doesn't understand who you are. I know who you are. But you start talking about dying, and this isn't going to happen. And then Jesus will have to rebuke him for saying things like that. And so he was always in and out. Remember the situation he said once, oh, the rest of these, these turkeys can deny you, but I'll never deny you. I'll never deny you. They can, you know, I will not. And Jesus says, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he did, after he's grilled by a couple of ladies, another servant. And he curses and he, want, and he realizes that he, has cur that he has denied Jesus. And Jesus, at the trial, turns and looks at him and he runs out with a broken heart. He was an individual who was always struggling, always trying to line the ducks up and had a difficult time with it. But Jesus works with him and appoints him and gives him honor and gives him direction in his life because he was an individual, a normal individual, who would always acknowledge his mistakes and turn and trust in God and not in himself. Remember James and John, and Jesus was really close to James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Jesus gave them the name of sons of thunder because one time the, some group of people didn't want to listen. Jesus didn't want them passing through his area. And James and John said, let's just call down thunder and let's just destroy all these people. Jesus has to calm them down. No, that's not the way that we do business. That's not how that it is. And on one occasion, even mom, their mom got involved in this. And they're talking about Jesus coming to his kingdom and not understanding necessarily what the kingdom's about. And they're saying things like, uh, hey, when you go into power, how about one of us on the right and one of us on the left? And we can all be right there with you. And the rest of the disciples hear about this and they're indignant. And over and over, these apostles are always trying to figure out, what's in this for me? They're ordinary guys with ordinary problems trying to figure out what's the best way. And Jesus is always saying, slow down. You know, it's not about you. It's about serving one another. Jesus came to serve, not to be served. And he showed them the way he taught them not to think so highly of themselves that they could not serve one another. And isn't that an interesting note with Jesus in Philippians chapter two, that even though he is the creator, even though he is God, he took on the form of a man and became a servant. Everybody looks out for his own interests. Philippians chapter two talks about there, not those of Jesus Christ, but the thing that makes us great, the things that will separate us from the world, the things that makes us extraordinary in life, 
when we will back up and put God first in our lives and realize that it's not about me. It's not about what I accomplish. It's all about God. God takes that which is ordinary and makes it extraordinary. And that's what happened with these guys. You know, they're individuals, all their problems, 12 of them. One of them was Judas. He was lost. He lost because he began to just seek himself. You know, he's going to... He's going to pick up all that silver. He's going to tuck it away or whatever he's going to do. He lost it because he got his value system out of whack, out of order. And he got himself so far into it, he couldn't back out of it. That's what we could do if we're not careful in life. Sin can overpower us. We start running life our way and doing it our way. We need to be people who honor God with our lives and put him first in our lives. And so after Jesus died and he went back to heaven, the apostles were out there. He told them, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the earth. And with courage, they moved on. He had trained them. He had equipped these ordinary men to become. And you remember the story of Peter. And he's out with uh, uh, one of the other disciples. And they run into a guy in chapter 3 at the beautiful gate. And they heal him there. The Jewish leaders in chapter 4 call them in. And they say, by whose authority? You know, why did you do this? What's this good work you did? And then Peter just slows down. He says, you know, what do, what do you ask me about this, you know, these good things I'm doing? Well, let me tell you what's, what it's all about. It's about the authority of Jesus Christ, the individual you crucified, but God raised from the dead that we have done these things. And the Jewish leaders looked at the apostles, Peter there and the other apostle, and says to themselves in their discussion there, who are these guys? They're ordinary individuals. They're ordinary guys. They're uneducated. There's nothing special about them, but there is something unique about them. They are the ones who had been with Jesus. When a person has been with Jesus, when they realize that Jesus is the answer to their life, then the troubles of this life, Jesus says, you know, bring them to me. You know, you who are heavy laden, Put your yoke and put your burdens on me. Take up my yoke and follow after me. Jesus promises that he will take us in the mug and the mire of life and whatever we're dealing with and lift us up and give us purpose and give us directions. Because in this life, we can never become and accomplish all the things that we had dreamed to be. Many people just give up, just do whatever, decide to live a mundane life. But in Christ, whatever we're at, whatever we're doing, whatever we are, God gives us purpose if we'll put him first, if we'll seek him first in our lives. He has the ability to take ordinary individuals and make them exceptional. When you look at the New Testament, you look at the New Testament church, it was not a church in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 that was made up of the rich and famous. It was not, it was not the intellectuals. But it was the common, ordinary individuals who realized that their life was what it was, with good or bad, but realized that true life was found in Jesus Christ, and he was the solution to all of the challenges in life. And when we realize that, no matter who we are, no matter what we do in life, he can take us as ordinary individuals and make us into extraordinary individuals who will serve him in his purpose and give us an eternal mission that will carry us far through this world on into the next as we influence those that are around us and we become and we live the light of Christ in this world. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this life and the blessings you give us. Help us to trust in you. Help us to realize it's only in you that we have value and we have purpose and that you put us here as a test of trial to see if we'll serve ourselves or serve you. Help us to be the people you called us to be. Thank you for your son, his sacrifice. In his name we pray, amen. And so thank you for joining us. And uh, let's continue to focus, move on through this COVID thing, wherever it takes us, and realize that God's always with us. And uh, whatever we're faced with, we can overcome it because God is there in our corner if we'll trust in him. Thank you for joining us.